So I've started some recording and still waiting on um, all of the presenters. Um, but in the meantime, and I may get a chance to say this again, or I may not. First of all, good afternoon to everybody. Um, this is just some housekeeping prior to our workshop. Um, if you have not had your two meetings with your, well, I'm sorry, your one meeting, you shouldn't have had but one by now, uh, with your advisor, please get with your advisor and uh, have those meetings. Um, what you will see also is that we are sending out the digital uh, forms. So if you can use those, uh, if that's more convenient for you, we're accepting those as well. Okay. Um, we need to get those meetings done. Um, you know, definitely uh, in the next week or so, if, if uh, you haven't done it already. And um, for those of you who are thinking about uh, uh, grant aid, then, you know, we definitely have to have those meetings done. We definitely have to have um, the um, workshops in. So all of those little housekeeping things that your advisors are emailing you, make sure you follow up with those things, you know, those items, because, you know, if those boxes aren't checked and you are applying for grant aid, then you won't be receiving it. Um, we want to be able to, you know, do things uh, decent and in order, and we're going to do things the right way. <clears throat> so uh, you have ample opportunity to get your meetings in, especially with the uh, online bot forms as well, um, you know, as well as, you know, you have several workshops to, you know, to choose from that you can attend. So, you know, really there's no excuse not to, uh, not to um, meet those or check those boxes, okay? Um, we are at 158. Uh, if you guys have any questions pertaining to that, please don't hesitate to reach out to your advisor. Um, you know, and for whatever reason, you don't know who your advisor is, you can reach out to me. Um, but we are preparing to get started uh, from the presenters who are also the SSS staff. Um, are we ready to go? Let me know if we're ready to go and we'll get started or when you when you're ready and we'll get started. OK, we still have a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Laura Salakoffer, um, Student Development Advisor, and I would like for everyone that's present to type your full name in the chat box so that we can have um, everyone down for attendance and you can be credited um, for your participation today. Thank you so much for um, participating in our very first workshop for the year 2023. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So I'm gonna start in a couple of minutes. Um, thank you so much, Maya. Thank you so much, Brandon. Thank you so much, Ms. Jones. Thank you so much, Ms. Banks. It's not Maya, it's Mia. Mia, I'm sorry. Didn't mean to pronounce your name incorrectly. No problem, no problem. <laughs> okay, we have our presenters today. I'm going to present a piece. Um, Ms. Cooper is going to present a piece. And at the end of our session, Ms. Sledge is going to sum up everything and address any questions. The purpose of this um, group, this um, workshop is to just give you some strategies to help manage time. Everyone knows that colleges, can, college work can be hard because you have life going along, along with working with college, going to school, 
Um, all of these things are important. You have to, in order to be successful, you have to manage your time properly. So um, with that said, we have another couple of, we have another minute. Actually, we don't have any more minutes, but um, I'm going to go ahead on and start. I'm going to share my screen. Um, hopefully I can share my screen. Let me know when you can see what I'm doing. Okay, is everyone there? Is everyone looking at the screen? Um, yes, we can see it. Okay, so as I said, um, our workshop today is specifically geared towards time management. So as a title, I have Time Waits for No One, Get Her Done. Has everyone heard of Get Her Done before? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, thank you so much for um, answering. Okay, so bottom line is that students have life, but you have to set the tone for your own success. No one is responsible and you can't blame anyone if you're not successful. It's all about managing time. And we know you have life. Some of you have children. Some of you have husbands. Some of you are young and you're in high school still. And so you have a lot on your plate. With that being said, time management becomes very, very important because you have to consider all of the areas of your life. You have friends, you have things that you wanna do, you wanna enjoy yourself this, that, and the other, but above all things, the only person that's responsible for your grade and what's on your transcript is you. No one really cares or thinking about, well, some of us do. No one really considers all of the other things that you have to take, um, take account for. So with that being said, let's go to the next one. So, what do we mean when we say that time waits for no one? Simple. You cannot make more time. There are 24 hours in a day. That's all you get. 24 hours, not 25, not 26, not 30. So can you put in the chat box for me examples of how we waste time? I can tell you my biggest waste, my biggest waste, Sometimes I watch just a little bit too much TV. Me and CIS and what I watch. CIS, Perry Mason, I like anime. There's a whole lot of things that I can spend time wasting watching TV. But guess what? The number one thing that I didn't do when I was in college, I didn't watch TV. I didn't watch TV. People had to tell me what was going on in the world because if, if, the t if the show that I was watching wasn't connected to something that I was doing in school or, or education about something that was happening with what I was doing, I cut it off. So what are some of the things, Laquana, has anybody added anything um, into the chat box about um, things they waste time doing, because I want to hear from you. This is going to be interactive, y'all. I would say scrolling the internet. Ah, internet. Absolutely. Absolutely. Internet. Nobody gets stuck on TikTok? I've seen several people say uh, TV as well, Miss uh, Zala Coffin. Yes, absolutely. Phone. So I can tell you, it really is important because there are so many distractions that we can get involved in that would take away time from 
doing what we have to do, there's a lot of different distractions. And because we are human by nature, we can get sucked in. <laughs> so let's talk about why time management is so important for students to learn how to manage it. So, oh wait, just to talk about what time management is, according to the Oxford Dictionary, time management is the ability to use one's time effectively or productively and especially at work. So guess what? I'm gonna leave especially at work. And the reason why I'm gonna leave especially at work is because you're in school and that's your work. For many of you who do not work at a regular job and the only thing you have to do at school is work and your work is all of your classwork. Um, time management is the key to working efficiently and good time management helps you achieve bigger goals. It reduces procrast procrastination and increases productivity. Effective time management reduces the feeling of being overwhelmed. Anybody had an assignment that, that you could have done, but you thought that it was a little short, a little short thing, and all of a sudden you have five minutes and you figure, I can do this in five minutes, and you start looking at exactly all of the details that you have to add in, and all of a sudden you feel overwhelmed because you should have started that assignment early. You have to learn to be disciplined. So here we go. What does it mean to be disciplined? Discipline is the ability to carefully control the way that you work, carefully control the way that you live, carefully control the way you behave in order to achieve a goal. So those are the things that you need to consider. Live, work, and behave. Whoops, going fast, going too fast. Okay, so these are the skills needed for you to manage your time. Number one, you have to be goal-oriented. And I'm not gonna talk about goal-oriented right now because I have another slide that talks specifically about goal orientation but I'm gonna talk about setting priorities. So the first thing you need to do when you're in school is to set your priorities for your assignments, right? You, you have life and I'm gonna to continue to talk about life because you have your friends, you have your family, you have your school life, you have all of these other, th other things and other people that you have to consider that are part of your life, that are part of your makeup. And you can't do anything with that because they are part of what you do. But you do have to set priority and timelines and things like that. So first of all, you need to create a list of the tasks that you have to complete when it comes to school. And with creating that list, you need to make sure that you set a time to get her done. Then you need to rank those tasks as in what's more important. So if you have an assignment that's due in two weeks, but you have an assignment that's due tomorrow, what you're going to do, which are you going to do first? You're going to focus on the one that's immediate. And even though the assignment two weeks away may be larger, you still need to focus on what needs to be done right now. So setting priorities are very important. Then you need to make sure that you allocate time for each task. The best way to do that is to use a planning tool. Now your planning tool might be Google Calendar. It might be having a to-do list. It might be setting and setting your schedule. For me, I need, I, and I let me tell you, honestly, I really truly didn't know anything about Google Calendar until the pandemic. 
I used the calendar, but Google Calendar was the best thing that ever happened, my best discovery, because I was able to set time frames, I was able to set meetings, and to this day, if it's not on my calendar, it's not going to happen. So every time I make an appointment to see someone or I have something that needs to be done, I put that in my Google Calendar real quick, real, fa real fast. And I also set a, set a time frame for me to get it done. Planning tools are awesome. And you can find out a lot of different planning tools that help you to do what you need to do. Know when to remove tasks from your list, from your to-do list. That's another thing that you need to do. So if you have something that you plan to do and it's not a top priority, you might want to put it down a little bit lower or set it for another day or make you want to make time for it. But it's going according to the level of importance for you. The next thing to do is to make sure you're realistic about the time setting that you're doing. If you have um, an assignment that you know is going to take you at least three hours to do, make sure you put that in the plan. Also, you got to be realistic about what you're doing. So for me, when I was in school, I know that I needed to work on a certain subject for a certain length of time. Well, I work. When I get home, I automatically know the last thing that I want to do is get on a computer. So I would schedule 30 minutes or maybe an hour for myself in order to regroup. After that hour, I would make sure I got up, went to the computer and got her, got her done because you got to get her done. Nobody's responsible for your grades, but you. You can't say, well, mama told me this and I had to do that because it's not going on mama's transcript. It's going on your transcript. So you got to get her done. You can't say, well, um, you know, I had to feed the kids. You have to put that in your schedule. Be realistic. Okay. The next thing I want to talk about is multitasking. Okay. So Mothers are some of the best multitaskers I have ever seen. The best. I can tell you I come from a very large family. It's nine of us. My mom had six boys and three girls. My mom could work. She could come home and cook, make sure everybody's homework was done, um, do the cleaning and she's doing all of these gazillion things at one time. She learned how to multitask very quickly and very efficiently. But what she did do was make sure that some things, some other tasks were delegated to others who could help in the situation. And you may be in that situation where you may not be able to delegate. So if you're not able to delegate your some of those tasks, then you have to learn how to focus and manage it one task at a time so that you're paying close attention to what you're doing. When it comes to school and multitasking, sometimes it doesn't work because I can tell you, if you're in the medical field and you're working, trying to learn different um, concepts, you need to really, really focus and really, really concentrate. So you might have to set a different type of a schedule where you don't have any distractions. Maybe you put the kids to bed first and then spend a couple of minutes to boost off for the day and then get back into your schoolwork. And you may have to do a, diff a little bit different planning. Okay, 
forming good habits. One, one idea of forming good habits is to make sure that you manage your distractions. Um, develop good study habits. Make sure that you're setting your priorities, that you're making sure that you have time to actually self-care because caring for yourself is equally as important. You're caring about everybody else and you're doing a million other things, but you also have to make sure that you're taking care of yourself. So taking care of yourself is one of, one of the things that you need to do. That's forming a good habit because it helps keep your mind clear, making sure that you minimize your distractions when you're in school. And when you're in school, I mean, studying and this, that, and the other, and you're working on the things that you have to do. Also looking ahead for weeks and months to plan for larger assignments. So if you have a 10 page paper to do, you're not gonna wait till the day before the paper is due in order to get it together and start your draft and this, that, and the other. Work a little bit at a time. Make sure that you're looking ahead of your assignments and your syllabus so that you'll know what's going on. You'll know what to do and you can make time for all of those things. So that's all about managing your time. Whoops, too many times. Okay, let's talk about goal-oriented. Okay, so what are the things that you have to do in your life? If you make a list of those things, add some things that you don't see on this list. So I wrote eat, sleep, take care of your children, clean your house, make sure you got self-care. You might have parents that you're taking care of or grandparents that you're taking care of. Um, you might have to pay bills. You have to study. You have to attend class. Um, and you also... Another thing, some of you don't live directly in this area, so you may have to drive 20, 30, 40 minutes in order to get to class or whatever. So you need to include all of those things in your schedule so that you can figure out how to reach your goals. So, and these are the skills you need to manage your time and, and to, as a student, and to become disciplined in your craft. So we call, we call it goal orientation. Your level of motivation for setting targets and maintaining focus is your goal, your overall goal. And you have to plan for that. So here's a quote from Albert Einstein. If you want to live a happy life, tie it to a goal, not to people or things. Being goal-oriented means you're focused on reaching or completing a specific task to achieve a planned outcome. And people who are goal-oriented are driven and motivated by that purpose. And it's also known as task-driven or result-driven. Um, and someone who is goal-oriented oriented, uses targets to stay motivated in their work. So when you're thinking about a person that's goal oriented, um, think about the person that started the Nike company. And I hear this all the time. People who work for Nike know the products from front door to back door. They're trained. And they make sure that their whole entire goal is to be able to talk to you about what that shoe does and what that shoe does and what that shoe does. They're goal oriented. The goal is to make sure that when you leave that store, first of all, you have bought a pair of shoes. Second of all, that you're happy with your purchase. You can be goal oriented with your school and that comes with managing your time properly. The second principle I wanna talk about is having a plan. Okay, Alan Lakin, failing to plan is planning to fail. So what are the things you need to plan for? Can you put a couple of suggestions in, in the chat box? What are the things that you need to plan for? And take a look at my clock. 
the numbers are all jumbled up and it says, whatever, I'm always late. Think about the things that you need to plan for. And how are you going to achieve those goals? And make sure your plans are realistic. So summing it up, think about TikTok, okay? That clock that's on the wall right there. You can't make time. You can't make up for lost time. The only thing you can do is plan to do it better. Excuse me, Miss C. Yes. Could you go back to this previous slide? I was trying to write some of that stuff down. Which one? Um, this one? The second principle. The second principle. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. I was moving too fast. I'm sorry. No, I just was in the chat while you were talking and then you went to the next slide. So I was, oh, okay. I was multitasking. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. Classic example. We try to multitask. Like I can listen to music and, and read and have the TV going. But guess what? My brain is only really focused on one thing at a time. So I might hear a song and be like, oh, I haven't heard that song in a long time. In the meantime, I just took my attention off of reading to, to listen to that song. Then I run back to what I'm reading. And here goes um, the theme song for, let's see, uh, uh, the Beverly Hillbillies. And I know y'all don't watch the Beverly Hillbillies. I just dated myself, right? Okay, stop. Don't laugh at me. Okay, so here goes this theme song to Beverly Hillbillies. Oh, and all of a sudden, guess what? My attention was taken off of the focus that I was focused on. So multitasking, you don't really multitask because your brain is only paying, a, pay, paying specific attention to what you're looking at. It'll wander off and go somewhere else for, for a minute here or go somewhere else for a minute there. It'll come back, but really, that's not multitasking. Okay. You good? Yes, but I, I want to ask you one more question. That quote from Einstein, what was that quote you said from Einstein? There we go. Uh, where was I? Okay. Albert Einstein says, if you want to live a happy life, tie it to a goal, not to people or things. That's a good stop point right there, a good question. Um, what does it mean not to tie it to people or things? Anybody got an idea about that? I, was, I would say don't base your happiness off of people or things by, if you're happy, don't, don't, depend on a certain person or a certain thing to make you happy because if that certain thing or that certain person is no longer there they're going to take away from your happiness you know you have to find happiness within yourself um to stay happy because like I said if you don't you know your happiness will go with those people or those things when it goes away absolutely absolutely correct thank you so much thank you okay can I go on I think I was on summing it up and TikTok. Okay, so one of the most creative things that has ever come about is TikTok, but that's T-I-C dash T-O-C, not T-I-C-K, T-O-C-K. TikTok is the clock. Time is going down. Time is going around. Time is going around. You need to make time to review. You need to make a to-do list and follow it for each class. You need to prioritize. And I didn't say anything about learning to say no. Um, sometimes you're going to need to say no, okay? Your friends may be going somewhere and you might want to hang out and and, but you have an assignment due for bio 168, which is A and P. Now, you know, 
that is a very important class. You cannot afford to flunk the test, this, that, and the other. So you might have to say no because you have something that is that takes precedence, that's that's on your list of priority, number one, get her done. The next thing I want to talk to you about is making sure that you get help for classes that you're struggling with. It's easy to say, get help. It's not so easy to understand when you're struggling with something. Sometimes it takes you a little bit longer to figure out, hey, I don't get, I don't get this. But as soon as you realize that you don't get a concept, get help. Get the help, get the help, get the help. Add that into your list of priorities. Get help for classes that you're struggling with. Even if it's just one concept, get the help that you need. It might mean that you need to spend a little extra time with a friend. You might have to come to student support services. You might have to go to the, um, to the um, Center for Academic Excellence but just get the help that you need because even if you're not doing 100% like you want to in a class, you can always go get some help so that you can raise the bar. Stop multitasking, develop good habits. So I'm gonna give you an example about how I developed good habits. When I was going to college, and I was on a campus, I recognized that from 6 p.m. after dinner to about 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, I could not study. It was just too much going on on campus. You had this, this group doing this, that group doing that. You had all kinds of things going on on campus, and it was a big distraction. Um, but I'm going to tell you God's honest truth. My mom sent me to school to learn. She didn't send me to school to play. And she told me that from the time I started school. Okay. The deal was I had to figure out what was more important. Was it more important for me to go and play or was it more important for me to study? So my only job at the time was to study and pass all my classes. So I developed a schedule where I would actually come home after school, come to, come to my room um, after dinner, while everybody was doing a zillion things, I would take time and I would sleep. I would go to sleep from about eight o'clock to 12 o'clock. Everybody else is getting ready to go to bed, 12, one o'clock. I'd get up and that's when I started studying. And I would study until about four o'clock in the morning. I would get her done. I, then I take me a nap. Then I get up and go and, and, and go to breakfast and go to class. That worked for me, but I had to figure it out. So that was a good habit for me to develop because I didn't have any distractions. When you're setting things in life, you got to be flexible about it. So I missed a lot of campus activities you know, but I also set time so that if if I worked hard all week long on the weekends, I would play. I might go to somewhere, you know, movies or whatever, but I had to develop a habit. Think about what you're doing and how you're going to develop the habit so you can be successful. Remember, it's all about, school is all about time management. I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Cooper, Ms. Cooper, you have the screen. Hi, everyone. Let me share my screen with y'all. Is everybody able to see the screen? Yes. 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 All right. If you have any questions, you feel free to um, unmute yourself or even feel free to type it in the chat box. So let's keep it moving. So we have some myths about time management. And 
Some myths are time management is nothing but common sense. I do well in school, so I must be managing my time effectively. It takes all the fun out of life. Time management, I work better under pressure. No matter what I do, I won't have enough time. So how many of y'all feel as though y'all work better under pressure? I hear that so many times, that a person will wait to the last minute to get stuff done because they believe in their mind that they actually really do work better under pressure. And that is a myth. We really do not work better under pressure. So now, let me know if you know any myths about time management. And let's talk about some truths about time management. It increases productivity. It reduces stress. It improves self-esteem. It helps achieve balance in life. It increases self-confidence and it helps you reach your goals. And then you wanna ask yourself where to start to set goals. And what is important? When you make your goal specific, you have to be concrete. Don't be vague. Don't just say, um, I want to work better on time management. Be specific on what you're actually saying. If time management is a goal you want to set in your life, be specific. Don't just say that. Go into full detail of what you need to work on in your life to make it more efficient and effective for you on a day-to-day -day basis. And then you want to set both long-term goals and short-term ones to support them. And then you set a deadline for your goals. There's no point to have a goal without a deadline because then that just becomes a dream. And then you want to integrate your goals with your school, your personal life, and your career. And then you want to have them all put together under your time management calendar so they can all come into a full circle in your life. And then you want to realize that goals change, but know which goals to stick to. So sometimes you might cross a goal out because something changed in your life. So that's no more, that's no longer attainable. And it's okay. You can set a new one. So from goals, so now we're going from goals to your priorities. So you have to understand what's important and what isn't important. I saw a lot of people saying in the chat box that they um search, search, search social media. They might be on their phone. Well, that's not a priority, right? <laughs> so you might need to scale back a little bit on that. What order do things need to be done in? Set that. So sometimes I remember, um, I used to always tell myself, the hardest things that I see that I have to accomplish in a day, I do it first. Because I never want to actually say, I'll get her. Let me, let me go to Ms. Zola Coffer. I get her done later. No, get it done first. What you see to be the most difficult, get it done. I saw somebody in here say, send doctor's appointments. Eight o'clock, the doctor's opens. Oh, the doctor office is open. Call them. Set the date. Get it done. Eight o'clock in the morning. Once you know what your priorities are, you need to plan out a schedule for the semester, the week, and the day. Y'all receive your whole fall semester, your whole spring semester. You know what classes you're going to take. And then the professor provides you with the syllabus. So you know from start to finish what is expected out of you, out of that class. It's no surprises. So you have to start prioritizing everything in your school schedule so you can actually stay on task so you won't be shocked when you walk into class one day and the professor says are you ready for the exam you already knew about the exam and you're ready for it then you want to acknowledge the realities of college schedules they will be times i'm, I'm sure everyone in here will be going to a four-year college or Everyone in here has taken an eight o'clock class or avoided an eight o'clock class. Acknowledge the realities that you may not be able to avoid that eight o'clock class one day. Or if the professor says, 
this is the due date. There's no extension. I'm not opening up this assignment. You have to understand that that is the reality of college. Um, you're in, they see you as an adult. So therefore they're going to expect you to have your highest expectations up, not only for yourself, but for them as well. So planning may seem hard at first, but the more you do it, the easier and more natural it gets. Everything in life, when we're first introduced to it, it's hard. So you might say to yourself, I want to I wanna actually get better at time management, but I just do not know how. You have to learn that starting is the first step. Start, plan, prioritize, set your goals. Make a schedule. So I have a calendar here. Everyone in here needs to go. If you don't have it, everyone has a calendar on their phone. Everyone has access to a Google calendar through your Gmail at HCC. But always go get your own. Go get your own calendar and write it out. Go to it. Make a schedule. Set up your semester calendar. Block all important time, set time obligations. Block it out. If your class is from 11 to 1, I'm sorry, 11 to 12, block out. Put your phone on do not disturb because we all know that one special person start to text us, we're texting them back and then we can't get enough of it. We're back and forth and back and forth. So now we have became distracted. So now within our distraction, we're not paying attention to what's going on. Block all class and lab times. Everyone in here, I'm not sure, but the majority of y'all do take a science. And in that science class, you have to have a lab. The lab is only one hour. Block that time frame out. Block it out from social media. Block it out from um, any other disturbances that can that can disturb you and distract you from making good grades. Look at the syllabus for the class schedule, please. When the teacher gives you the syllabus on the first day, read it. Read it in its entirety, and you will know what he wants from A to Z. <clears throat> Note the weight of the activities. And that's a big thing. A lot of times when we get a, uh, our syllabus from the professor, you may not realize, but your exams are weighted. Your, your papers are weighted. Your discussion boards are weighted. That could be, discussion boards usually be around 5% of your grade. An exam can sometimes weigh from 15% to 25% of your grade. Pay attention to that because if you bomb an exam, you could be like, oh, I have an A in his class. Then you totally bomb an exam. Now you have a C because you did not actually take the time to read the schedule, to make the schedule, to say, this is time I need to allocate within my time frame to study for, for the exam. And then highlight all exams and project due dates. Work backwards from exams and papers. Study time and then have time for your sanity. Because we all know juggling college life, then we have adulthood, then we have parenthood, and then you even have your partner. It can be overwhelming. So therefore, within all your time management, take time for yourself. You are important. Organizing your time. Set realistic goals that are only 24 hours in a day. So don't say you're going to do 150 things and think that that is actually realistic. It's not. So if you say to yourself, I can only get two things done today, you know what? That's what's up. Congratulations. You did two things today. You go boy, you go girl. Congratulate yourself that you you set something, you, you set a goal, you prioritize, you put it in your calendar and you achieved it. You spare time to review. So if you ended up with an extra hour, go back over everything. Study at the same time each day. Make it a habit. If you say to yourself, I'm going to allegate 6 p.m. every single day and I'm going to study then after a while, you'll start to get into the habit of 6 p.m. Every day I study, 6 p.m. Every day I study, and it becomes natural to you. Then divide study time into manageable chunks. Like if you have to study for two classes, take a break. 
have them in chunks. Don't feel as though you have to cram all that information in as, at one time because then it becomes information overload. Leave extra time at the end. Then somebody want to tell me why I said leave extra time at the end? It goes towards the last slide I just said. If you remember, you can chat or you can unmute yourself and tell me why did I say leave extra time at the end? And then you never do today what you can put off till tomorrow. Then it's, this is a poem, a haiku. <laughs> Procrastination is my sin. It brings me not but sorrow. I know that I should stop it. In fact, I will tomorrow. So even though this person recognized that they're a procrastinator, they're still saying, I'm not going to change until tomorrow. And it goes back to them being a procrastinator. How many people in here can say that they are a procrastinator? And be honest with yourself. You have, and if you don't believe you're one, let's look at the forms of procrastination. You're ignoring the task, hoping it will go away. You're underestimating how long it will take. And then you're overestimating your abilities and resources. You're telling yourself that poor performance is okay. And then you're insisting on perfection. And then you're doing something else that isn't very important, i.e. scrolling on your phone. And then you're believing that repeated minor delays won't hurt you. And then you're talking about rather than doing it. So you're talking about it rather than actually following through. And then you're putting all your work on only one part of the task. And then you become, and then you have one where you're becoming paralyzed when having to make choices. So those are, we have all types of form of procrastination. That's just a little list. But then let's look at ways to overcome procrastination. Win the mental battle by committing to being on time. Set and keep deadlines. Organize, schedule, and plan. Divide a big job into smaller ones. Find a way to make a game of your work or make it fun. I love fun. Um, I don't like to be bored. I'm sure many of y'all don't. Who wants to be bored? Make fun out of the situation. If you say, oh, I don't want to attack this goal, I'm pressing it and smile about it. Joke. Make yourself happy. Don't approach it negatively. What I'm pretty much trying to say, be positive about what you have to do and especially what you need to get accomplished. Find a way, <clears throat> I'm sorry, reward yourself when you're done. A, when it comes to life, you are your biggest cheerleader. You are your biggest fan. Reward yourself for everything you accomplish and you achieve in life. Tell your friends or roommates to remind you of your priorities and deadlines. It's okay. Or even your partner. It's okay to say, hey, can you set a reminder for me? Because then they might be obligated to be like, okay, look, um, at this time, I need to come and remind such and such that they need to, like Ms. Zolikoffer said, get her done. It's nothing wrong with having a little help. Or even tell your parents. <laughs> I'm sure mom or dad would not mind telling you when you have to get something done. And learn to say no to time wasters. What are time wasters? Tackle time wasters. Learn to recognize when you're wasting time. Decide what you need to do and, and can do and, and can realistically. Ms. Cooper, uh, you you. Went, you went out for a second. I just wanted to check uh, check your uh, your mic to see if it's still on. Something happened. I don't know what it was. <clears throat> 
We lost connection for a minute, Ms. Cooper. Ms. Cooper, now you need it. Well, welcome back. <laughs> Uh, I thank, you for, thank you for staying with us y'all are not time wasters <laughs> and i'm not going to waste your time so let's go ahead and try to wrap this up i'm gonna share my screen with y'all again is everybody cool is everybody okay everyone is fine yeah. yes to yes, the participants y'all good out there y'all good out there in yes, halifax yeah. land <laughs> yep all right, let's keep it moving. Where did I leave off at? Can somebody tell me what was the last thing you heard? I heard when to say no. Okay, so we'll, I'll start at the beginning of the slide. You say no. Do you remember what to say no to? Say no to time wasters. Learn to recognize when you're wasting time. Decide what you need to do and can do realistically. Learn how to say no when you don't have time. Return calls at your convenience. The phone is a major time killer. Learn to say, I can't talk right now. I'll get back to you. Wasting time is often linked to a lack of self-discipline. Ask yourself, do I really need this? Do I really need to do this or not? So let's say when, um, when we're learning to say no, avoid the temptation to socialize when you've scheduled work. If I have to get something done or if you have to get something done, we can't talk on the phone all day. We can't socialize all day. We can't be out hanging with our friends all day because we have a task at hand. If friends ask you to join them last minute, decline outright, but ask if you could get together later in the week. If they're really your friend, they might just encourage it and be like, we, we totally understand. We can do a rain check, get your work done. Socializing is important when you don't have other things to worry about. So if, if everything's done in your calendar, you can check mark everything off, pick your phone up, call your friends, start texting everybody, go hang out, go to a party, go to a restaurant, go have fun, live life. But if you have stuff that's actually waiting for you when you get home, the stress is there. It's still waiting for you. So you need to learn how to say no. Study somewhere you won't be tempted to chat, watch movies, or YouTube, or use social utilities like Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, uh, TikTok. And then texts are a major distraction, like I mentioned earlier. You get that text from someone, or even if you're <laughs> arguing, you're not going to stop. You're going to constantly, you're distracted, your mind is gone. Now you're you're obviously zoning to that one thing, and you're going to stay there. Then you're going to look up and realize where has the time gone. I mean, I've seen people literally be on their phones all day and then look or on their tablet on it all day and then look up and be like oh wow it's eight o'clock already uh yeah <laughs> you wasted all these hours doing completely nothing and now you're actually trying to scramble to get things done get it done first and then surf the web then go hang out then socialize so let's revise and preview now stand on top of things. And then immediately, so what I mean by revise and preview, staying on top of things, is you have to immediately note all changes. For example, if your professor emails you and says, class is canceled today, and I will extend the paper till next week, you have to now go to your calendar, Paper should have been done already. But anyways, go to the calendar, cross out the day that I got a screen in the back. Cross out the day now. It's not due this day. Now it's going to be due this day. Put it in there. Because what if, let's say, you never even started the paper because you was going to start the paper eight o'clock the night prior. Now you think to yourself, oh, snap, I got a whole week of extra time. Trust and believe. If you feel like you got a whole week of extra time, you're not going to use that week as extra time. 
you're going to use that extra week to do other things. And then you're going to put yourself in the same exact predicament that you was once in. But then you can look at it as, oh, my paper is already done. So I'm going to go ahead and submit my paper and then chill because not only do I not have class, I'm done. So exams, paper, due date, revisions, go look at it, write it down. Meeting, additions, cancellations. If a meeting is canceled, write it down. Work schedule changes, write it down. Upcoming visitors, et cetera, et cetera. Immediately note all your changes. Preview the upcoming week, making any necessary adjustments. And then, and that's really important. Um, gone are the days that you should say, I'm just going to wing it today. I'm going to live day by day. No, live, but write stuff down because that in, in and of itself is time management. Putting yourself on a schedule and sticking to those time frames is very important. And then you can preview each day to see what might happen instead of just waiting for stuff to happen. You actually have everything scheduled. You're meeting your goals. You're setting your priorities and you're getting stuff done. You have now accomplished time management. Any questions or concerns? Laquana, oh, take it away. All right, I was going to give everybody some wait time. So I'm just going to reiterate um, some of the key points that Ms. Cooper and Ms. Z covered today in today's workshop. So we discussed the overall importance of time management, um, setting goals that are specific, setting priorities, eliminating those unnecessary distractions. Um, we also went over myths about time management that they... Um, take the fun out of life and some people believe that they actually work better um, under pressure but we also realize that time management makes us more productive um, we also discuss uh, setting short long-term goals making sure they're specific um, and planning for extended amounts of like larger events, like um, a wedding, family outings, and planning out enough time to complete um, larger assignments. And I like how Ms. Cooper talked about planning for your assignments at the end and going from there. And my one of the major takeaways that I'm taking away from the session is learning to say no and setting boundaries and my goals when I'm trying to complete tasks and stick to my schedule. I just wanted to conclude and close things out and say thanks to everyone for attending today's session. And thank you to Ms. Cooper and Mizzy for, for providing us with such great information that we can utilize. Thank you, Ms. Sledge. Thank you, Ms. Sledge. Everyone put um a reaction in the it on on yourself let me know if you like what you what you got if you learned something write it in the chat real quick um something that you can use there's a thumbs up there's right a... <laughs> and, and tell All us right. what, what 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 are your takeaways this is your exit ticket now tell us your takeaway in the chat or you can unmute yourself and verbally say it. Tell us your takeaway right now. That's your ticket out of this <laughs> Zoom meeting. I'm writing it down. Also, also, I didn't want to cut y'all off. Uh, you, they will, you will be receiving a um, uh, evaluation for this session. So be on the lookout for that. Um, I just want to say uh, excellent job by everyone who presented. Ms. Cooper, Ms. Alacoffer. And Ms. Sledge, I uh, just want to thank you guys for <clears throat> the great presentation. I think everything was relevant. Everything was timely. Um, um, I hope they were paying attention um, and, and took something away from this because everything was, was applicable, okay? So uh, thank you all. And uh, thank everybody for showing up. If, if there's anything else that somebody wants to say, go ahead and say it now. 
Otherwise, we're going to get out of the way and we'll be less than an hour. This Evangeline, um, I um, like what you said about the college schedule. Understand the college life or college schedule. That has been the biggest thing for me because it's like I am one of the most organized people in the world. But when I got, went back to school, I learned that there was a whole lot of more organizational skills I needed to learn. So that was right. how y'all said a lot of different things that um, I kind of jotted down. But I did this semester, I bought a plan, a calendar with a planner in it. I live by calendar. I have a calendar in every room in my house. Uh, I do posters, but this planner is actually, it's called, it reminds me of Miss Green. It has on here, you got this planner. And that's, <laughs> a, you got this is what motivates me. And it has everything set up in here, the mm. class assignments, it has mm. reminders, it has goals, it has tests and quiz, and it also has, I wish I can show you, I wish I could, I can't turn show you. Ca turn your camera on. Oh, duh. <laughs> I ain't what you see. This is that, Jones? this is that, and I got this from the dollar store, dollar okay. 25 cent, and, um, and it got everything, it got the calendar, and then it got like the goals, and it got when my Tessa dude and got the class that I'm taking and the assignment and the due dates and it's really and I, when I bought I said I ain't gonna use this. I have really been this has really been helpful because I had so many different planners I don't use but this when I saw this I said yeah I, I can use this and as you were talking I actually put some stuff on even though I have it on here I actually put it on the calendar when things are due but just have a multiple <clears throat> multiple notes and count it just really helps me to stay a little bit more organized Mm -hmm. and more focused but yeah um it was a lot of good information i actually took the um college transfer class that really helped me too it really taught me a lot about time management and stress management as well so that's mm -hmm. that's a really good class it was one credit and i thought it was going to be an easy class it was a lot of stuff in that class but yeah everything y'all shared was really really helpful so I, i'm glad i was able to attend do you want us to send you this powerpoint presentation if you can, I will. Yes, love I can to send it to you. If anybody Thank else you. wants to be sent this PowerPoint presentation for the information, please let me know. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I just wanted to say that I'm walking away with do what you need to do first. Right. When you wake up in the morning, don't get sidetracked. Do do what's important, and then you can relax the rest right. of the day. I'm really going to start implementing that into my life. Thank you. You're welcome. Good job. Because I know I, it took it took a while for me to do it. But once I did it, I did feel accomplished. I, congrat, I congratulated myself. And now I'm ready. I, I literally, if I have to set an appointment or anything, eight o'clock in the morning, I'm waiting for them to open now. <laughs> okay. I'm up at I 5 a.m. waiting for the world to get up. <laughs> get All up right. for the world. Be a shark. Yes, yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for joining our um our virtual workshop. Mm -hmm. And also uh just to put it out there for the for the ones that are here, uh we, our next workshop will be test anxiety. Uh that'll be done by uh Miss uh Sharice Rosser, who is our director of counseling here. And uh there will be some slots if you are uh on campus that you can go physically go there uh to the uh to the room where she will be presenting from it will also be uh available uh digitally on zoom as well so that just happened today so it's fresh out the press so um right. yeah so um looking forward to that that'll be february the 7th um, at two o'clock. Um, other than that, we are working on, you should be seeing uh, trips come out. Uh, we're working on uh, North Carolina a and uh, North Carolina State. All right. So you should be seeing those come out here shortly in the next week or so. And, uh, you know, sign up and uh, we, you know, we've just kicked off the spring 23 calendar. Okay. So um, one thing left, um, we have a couple of, um, of um, ideas 
um, takeaways in the chat box. Ms. Laquana, can you please read those? I sure can. Uh, Mr. Jahi Moody, I hope I said that correctly. He said some of his biggest take takeaways were prioritizing time, learning to be disciplined with my time, and learning to delay instant gratification by saying no. Ms. No. Darden no. said, <laughs> oh. Ms. Darden said how to she one of her takeaways was how to manage your time and set assignment dates and when when is like when it's due. And someone else stated that. Um, uh, think, oh, that's all. That's all the takeaways that we have in the chat. But I really like I, what Ms. Jones said about um, realizing that college has its own schedule. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also she had when she said it, it got the thought to my head to remember to kind of reiterate to y'all. Remember to always look at the syllabus and weigh your assignments. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because I have so many students that meet back with me and uh, they're amazed at how their grade just dropped because um, mm -hmm. they did not take that time to actually look to see what their professor um, expected out of them. Mm -hmm. So that's a real big thing. College is a full-time job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> life is and a full-time job. And so also now all we got to do is time manage it correctly. Exactly. And also, is, there is one more. There's one more um, response. Um, Corinne says, I use reminders on my phone, a lot of journaling, utilizing my time, being productive outside of things that distract me. Mm -hmm. That's Z, it. When you said something about um, taking a nap and then working at midnight, I always thought I had to be working early in the morning, you know, because you're in school, you got to, but I learned that I get up early, like five o'clock, like three o'clock in the morning sometime. And that's like the best time to do my work, get my work done. And then I can go back to sleep because I'm not working and school is a full-time job, but not feeling like putting pressure on myself that I have to do certain things at a certain time. It's like, I have to do what works for me because I right. do have other um, responsibilities. And long as I get it done is the main thing, <laughs> getting right. it done. It doesn't have to look a certain kind of way. Right. But yeah, I said a lot of, um, lot of good information. Yeah, it, it's important to know that um, one, of, one of the things is you have to look at what you got going on in life and take time to figure it out. Because I can tell you that idea of, college life and and having all of these other activities and distractions because life is full of distractions yes it and is. in order for you to be goal oriented you have to put that priority and and see what's important you're looking at the end goal so you have to figure out how to navigate everything in order to get to that goal and so i knew First of all, I'm going to tell you, I come from a crazy family. My mama would definitely come to school and whip my tail at 20 something years old if I didn't get my stuff together. So I had to figure it out. And it didn't, it took me a minute, but I was able to figure out what was the better time to study so that I wouldn't have to go over it and over and over again. And so that that schedule, when everybody else was was asleep, you found out that everyone who was studying, who wanted to pass their classes, they were up with me. <laughs> we would have, you know, study sessions at two o'clock in the morning. It worked. What you said at the beginning, I want to hold up, you know, everybody probably ready to go. What you said at the beginning is being my own advocate, knowing I'm responsible for my education because I don't, I'm, I'm an adult. I don't have a parent. I'm not going to school, <laughs> you know, my parent not paying for my college. I'm not getting financial aid. So I definitely have to be focused on this is for me and this is what, what I want to do and making things happen and um and being able to prioritize. Because like you said, some, um especially when I take more than one class, when I was taking one class, it was a little bit easier. But once I started taking multiple classes, being able to take breaks in between each class and knowing what each teacher expected. And sometimes it, they do um, 
have papers is due on the same day, which I'm like, don't they know I'm taking, no, they don't know I'm taking another class, you know, and if they do, they don't, I ain't gonna say they don't care, but you know what I'm saying, they doing what they need to do, and I just have to figure out a way to, um, to make it work, no excuses, I have no posters, no excuses, limit, you know, um, conversation just not going nowhere, you know, on the phone, wasting time, that was a big thing, on the phone, nonsense, chatter, not that you can't take breaks. And that's where I had to learn. I'm learning how to balance. Okay, I, it's okay to watch TV or take a break, Evangel, but that don't mean you spend two or three hours on useless stuff when you know you have something that else that needs to be done. So that was the biggest thing for me because I was just cram and wouldn't take no breaks and just was sitting in front of the computer. And, do, and one of the instructors told me, no, after an hour, take a break because your brain needs to you know, reset and everything. So being able to take a break and know how that looks without going to the other stream, becoming a slacker. <laughs> so it's like a lot of balance that I that I'm that I um I'm learning how to um navigate. You'll get it done. Like I said, take time out for yourself. And when you do schedule stuff, always just have extra time to woo side, to breathe, to um because it could be information overload and half the time you ain't learned nothing and <laughs> you just told your brain something, but you, you right. didn't learn the information. Right. So yeah, brain breaks are brain, brain breaks are great. It's even brain break games you can play if you Google mm -hmm. them on YouTube. Absolutely. Okay. Sounds great. Listen, the last thing, uh, uh, Google Gmail has a uh, task bar. I'm sorry, a task drop down on the right side of it. That's also good for, you know, uh, completing tasks and just kind of mm -hmm. uh, putting things there. So uh, there's just an added resource for you. Thank you all for coming. If all hearts and minds are clear, we'll see you in, I think we got the next, February 7th. Bye everyone. Have a good evening. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. Yes. Thank Goodbye, you everyone. Everything. Have a good night. Thank you. You too, guys. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. Peace. <laughs> I'm weak. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Peace out. Peace out. All right, Miss Darden. Okay. Um, hey, that was great, guys. Y'all did. You can remove her. Huh? You can remove her. Well, I was trying to give her a chance to. Um, she may have walked away. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let me see. Um, Oh, she gone. Okay, she gone. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I had just uh got to hit the remove button, but uh okay. Hey, that was a great job. Um, I mean, cover everything I would have covered. Um, and, and I think anybody else that would have did a time management uh presentation would have covered. So um uh, you know, I enjoy both, you know kind of you know the presenters um the main presenters mrs zalikoff and uh, miss cooper um you know you guys both have different um tones and you know but and styles but i think they both were very received very much received so and miss sledge thank you for wrapping everything up and you know kind of being the uh voice of the people um that's it guys i don't have a lot um, still working on items. Um, you know, Ms. Cooper, I think you say you had an idea for a workshop. Just let me know about that and we'll update the calendar and we'll we'll move on, move forward from okay. there. If anybody has anything for me, let me know. Yeah. Well, no, Z, um, mm -hmm. I think Jones really did want this presentation. Yeah. And um, just really quick. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. One second. Let me. I want to stop record. Okay. 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 I, mean, I just want to stop. I mean, for some reason. Let me close the chat. Close.
close. Okay.